vlog. So for today's video, I'm gonna share with you my topic, which is very precise. So this is a requirement from our subject. So before I start my little sharing with pericarditis, I just want to give you a little bit of a background of what pericarditis is. So, before I start, um, you have an idea of what is pericarditis. So, okay. so basically, pericarditis is the inflammation of the pericardium. Um, if you're not aware, um, this is the thin sac membrane that surrounds our heart. So our heart is surrounded by a protective sac or membrane called pericardium. If you're still curious of what pericarditis is, just continue the video and hope you enjoy. Pericarditis refers to the inflammation of the pericardium, the double-walled fluid-filled sac that encloses the heart. The pericardial cavity contains a fluid which serves as lubricant and allows the heart to contract and relax with minimum friction. It also protects the heart from infection and over distension. The most common form is acute pericarditis, meaning symptoms develop suddenly but do not last long. Subacute and chronic forms develop more slowly and last longer. Recurrent pericarditis is when there are symptom-free intervals in between episodes. A typical symptom of acute pericarditis is chest pain which can be sharp or dull. The pain may radiate to the left shoulder or arm. Unlike ischemic pain, however, pericardial pain is worsened with deep breathing, coughing, swallowing, or lying flat, and improved with sitting up or leaning forward. Inflammation of the pericardium can cause fluid to accumulate in the pericardial cavity. This is called pericardial effusion. The increased fluid volume may limit cardiac filling, leading to low cardiac output and sometimes life-threatening circulatory shock, known as cardiac tamponade. The rate at which fluid accumulates is often more critical than the volume of fluid. Slow accumulation of a large volume may not cause tamponade, but a relatively small effusion can do so if it builds up too rapidly because the pericardium cannot stretch quickly enough to accommodate it. Less commonly, chronic inflammation may also result in a thickened and stiffened pericardium. This is a condition known as a constrictive pericarditis. As the stiff pericardium reduces cardiac filling, blood backs up in the body's vein and the lungs where it came from. A peripheral venous congestion leads to swelling of legs and abdominal organs, while an elevated pulmonary pressure results in difficulty of breathing. The cause of pericarditis is often difficult to determine. Possible causes may include viral infection, bacterial infection, injury to the chest, inflammatory disorders, and other health problems, and some medications. Pericarditis may also develop following a heart attack or cardiac surgery. It can happen immediately after or as a delayed form several weeks later. Diagnosis can usually be made based on evaluation of chest pain and presence of pericardial rub. This is a characteristic sound produced when pericardial layers rub against each other, but tests are commonly performed to confirm and to exclude heart attack. In about half of patients, electrocardiogram shows changes that go through a characteristic sequence of four stages. Pericardial effusion, if present, can be seen with echocardiography or chest x-ray. Treatment depends on the cause and disease severity. Mild cases may get better on their own without treatment. Pain and inflammation can be relieved with anti-inflammatories. Corticosteroids may be used for non-infectious cases that do not respond to other medicines. Bacterial infections are treated with antibiotics and possibly drainage. If cardiac tamponade is present, a procedure called pericardiocentesis, this is performed to remove the excess fluid from the pericardial cavity. Severe constrictive pericarditis may require surgical removal of the pericardium as a last resort. 
So guys, I just want to add that it's important to treat pericarditis right away. Why? Because it can rule out other conditions like heart attack. This can also reduce the risk of long-term effects. So guys, I hope you learned something from my topic. And after watching this video, kindly click the like button and might as well share.